What's up guys? Just wanted to do a quick overview of the rack before I do some upgrades over the next couple months. Uh, the rack itself is a Great Lakes cabinet. Um, my girlfriend found this on Craigslist a few years ago. Uh, it's been great. Uh, no issues. A little annoying that the um, it has threaded holes instead of uh, square, but it's, it's not a big deal. Um, so we'll start at the top. I have all of the networking for the rack and the house. Um, it's just two Unify 24 port PoE switches with an Ortronics patch panel in the middle and these cable organizers that I found on eBay. Uh, love these things. Makes, uh, makes quite a mess look a lot neater on the outside. Uh, below all of the networking equipment, I have a little keyboard and laptop tray. For a while, I had an old ThinkPad X230 sitting on there, but eventually I took that out and just left the security camera for the rack there. There's also the cable modem is sitting on that shelf. And uh, this, this blue uh, ca cable here is just excess from what comes into the rack from the house, like a little bit of a service loop. Below all that, we have my HPE Aruba 5406R ZL2. This is a great little switch. Right now I'm just using it for testing the MD3220, um, but this is, this is a fantastic switch. You, can, you have six slots for these line cards and the uh, HP and Aruba have a, a, a few different ones. There's the, uh, this one here is, both of these actually are the 24 one gig, uh, no PoE cards, but there is a 24 port with PoE. Um, there is, there's like a, I forget how many ports, the one that does multi gig, it might just be eight ports um, that'll do like 2.5 and five and 10 gig. Um, then there's a an 8 port 10 gig with SFP plus there's a 40 gig uh, with the QSFP connector so they, there's a bunch of different modules that you can put in here this chassis will take redundant management modules um, but I'm, I'm gonna go a different way with my network upgrade I'm gonna end up with using a Cisco catalyst 3850 so I don't think I'm gonna use this uh, which is unfortunate because this this like I said is a really cool switch um, you don't need to deal with any of the licensing with Cisco um, for anything like routing or whatever. This will do um, BGP, OSPF, RIP, um, wh whatever whatever you need. Uh, I just love this switch. Um, but I'm in order in the interests of fault tolerance, I'm I'm probably going to end up with a couple of stacked Ciscos. Um, that's just an, a completely offline backup. So I keep all my uh, backups on here, uh, updated every here and there, just in case I get ransomware. Uh, I want to have something that's not connected to anything at all. Um, below that is my R720 and my R330. Both of these run Proxmox, and these are mostly production servers. This one, this one is very much production. They're, my router is on here. That's a ViOS VM. Um, and then this, this one is more like testing and development, um, but it's still important. I think uh, my security camera's uh, Blue Iris is also running on here in a VM. Uh, so yeah, both, both important. Uh, a lot of my testing and development I do on here, so things like the intranet when I need to test certain features like the, in, the Piwago card or the random... Uh, the random image Pyrogo card or the Nextcloud card uh, for calendars, I have test virtual machines on here for all of that, so I don't need to connect it to my actual production Pyrogo and Nextcloud servers. Um, anything else that I'm working on, um, it all all happens on here, really. I, I don't do too much on my uh, personal laptop. It, I'm usually just remoting into VMs on this guy and doing it on here over SSH. Um, in addition to my ViOS router on here. I also have my Libre NMS, so network monitoring for everything happens on here. Um, book stack for some documentation. Um, and then 
don't remember exactly what else is on here, but just it's this this one's mostly uh, production. Below that, I have my MD thirty two twenty I. Um, it's in a Powervault MD twelve twenty chassis, but I had to replace the back plane on this guy to get it to be an MD thirty two twenty I. Otherwise, it it the controllers rejected the back plane and they just aired out. It didn't work right. Um, but once I replace the back plane, it, as you can see, the light's blue, it works great. This is what I used in the booting Proxmox for my SCSI video. Um, and I like this guy. It was kind of a pain in the beginning, and I guess it still is, because you can only use certified uh, Dell drives with the Dell firmware on there. Um, and I actually had some issues when I first got it where it... I got drives that had the Dell firmware on there. They were on the certified drives list for this system, but they still wouldn't work. And I was very confused as to why. Eventually, after some, a few attempts, I found some drives that work perfectly in here, as you can see. Um, everything, everything's green and blue, so everything's good. Eventually, I do intend to uh, take this out and replace it with two... R430s, and I'm going to have those two and this all booting off of here, because um, this, this, obviously all the drives are in RAID, there's redundant controllers in the back, um, so this is very fault tolerant. Below that, I have my Vertex. A couple years ago, I had an itch for blades, and I was looking for some kind of blade chassis, and I didn't want something that was as big as the MD-1000, um, even though that probably would have been quite a bit cheaper. Um, I ended up with this Vertex, and I have to say, I absolutely love this little blade chassis. Um, you put four uh, Dell blades in it. You do need um, an extra, uh, like, a riser card um, or something. I don't know exactly uh, what it's called off the top of my head, but there's an extra card that goes in the back of these guys to interface with the PCIe fabric uh, in this in the enclosure because there are PCIe cards in the back and you can assign them to uh, specific blades. I actually have a uh, NVIDIA Quadro K2000 in there and an HBA that I'm eventually going to use with a uh, uh, PowerVault MD1200 for file storage. Um, but this great little chassis. You also get 25 two and a half inch drives up here. These are all SSDs except for those two. Um, this runs VMs phenomenally well. I absolutely, I cannot say enough good about this. Uh, this is not overly picky about drives. I do have all Dell in here, but I think it should accept probably anything as long as it's SAS. Um, SATA drives will not work. Um, you can assign, uh, vir you can create virtual disks across the drives however you like, and then assign those virtual disks to servers. You can't assign individual drives to servers, it does have to be a virtual disk, um, but you can do whatever you want with that, so you're not, you're not limited to like these drives over here for this blade and these drives are, are for this slot, like some of the other multi-node chassis are on the market. Um, you can, you can do whatever you want, um, as far as that goes. At the very bottom, we have the APC uh, 1500 VA UPS. Uh, great UPS. I just replaced the batteries on this last year. Um, it gives me about 10 minutes or so of load time. You can see the load's around a little under 700 watts now. Um, but that's, that's because I turned on the um, MD-1220i for the video. Uh, also, the... Uh, 5406. The 5406 doesn't draw much power. I think it, it, it's sitting right now probably around uh, 65 watts or so. Um, eventually, I want to, uh, like I said, swap out the power edge for the R430s um, and use just um, those with the uh, power vault here. So eventually, um, that that'll come out and then this this is blade chassis is not usually on that's just on because my girlfriend and I are running a few experiments right now on on this guy um, this blade right here is running XCP and G um, I was considering swapping over to it but I decided not to because it 
wouldn't install on 4K on drives, and I was doing something with those, so kind of got annoyed. Um, so I'm going to be just sticking with Proxmox. This one, <coughs> this one doesn't have any drives in it at the moment, um, but I did have XCPNG on both of these. At one point, I, before that, I had Proxmox on both of them, and I was kind of playing around with live migrations using the um, direct attach storage, and that worked very well. I also had a Windows 10 VM on this one that I was passing the uh, NVIDIA Quadro K2000 into and using for uh, some light gaming. Um, I actually, I wasn't doing it over the network. I was, I had a, uh, I have a, an adapter in the back that I'll show you in a minute that let me take my HDMI over Cat5 or Cat6 uh, over to my desk. And that, that worked very, very well. I'll show you what the back of this looks like. That's the back of the patch panel and the switches. Uh, over on the top there, kind of Velcro strapped to the side, is the base station for a couple of Grandstream decked phones. Um, I am running free PBX for home phone in, in this rack. That's an, Oh, that's one of the other uh, applications running on that R330. Um, just a power strip up there for the switches and the modem and decked receiver. This is that HDMI over CAT6 adapter that I was uh, talking about earlier. Um, these work very well if you're considering no issues with them. Um, that's the back of the keyboard tray and the modem. The 5406R only has one power supply in it now. And I'm probably not going to end up with another one because I don't think I'm going to end up using it the way I thought I was. Um, back of the R720, R330 down there, and in here, this is this is the MD3220i. Uh, redundant controllers installed, redundant power supplies installed. If you only have one power supply running, the other fan revs up to 100%, and that is extremely loud. Um, so you definitely, gonna, if, if you're considering one of these enclosures, um, you, you definitely want to have both PSUs installed. Um, this is the back of the Vertex. Um, I have three of the four PSUs um, connected. Uh, that's one of the reasons the uh, UPS is reading such a high uh, wattage is because this, this guy does take a lot of uh, power. Uh, the, both of those blades in front were M630s, uh, dual socket, um, and they, they suck down a pretty decent amount of power. Um, over here, you can see all the, I think there's eight, one, two, yeah, eight PCIe slots back here um, that you can assign to any of the servers however you'd like. I have an LSI HBA up here. Um, and then that that Quadro K2000 here, you can see that's the uh, that this just takes DisplayPort to HDMI for the HDMI converter. These are the hot plug squirrel cage fan modules uh, for the Vertex. The Vertex itself is actually very quiet. Most of the noise you hear is the power vault. Um, so this Dell actually says that this is meant to sit under someone's desk in an office and you definitely can do that um, that's absolutely an option for this thing um, just looking this this fan here on this power supply isn't even spinning um, again just I love this great enclosure um, and then at the very bottom is the UPS this rack did ship with a uh, or did come with a uh, just a basic plain dumb PDU on the side here um, but it didn't come with one on the other side so eventually when I get a second UPS I am gonna have to get a second PDU but that's okay and uh, yeah that's pretty much the whole rack Let's see how much of it I can get in one shot before we end but that is the uh, that's the rack